So since the release of the G4 DTG printer and the patented all new revolutionary, insert your adjective here, a vacuum platen, we've had a lot of questions about what it is and how it works. First of all, I just want to show you what it does. And a vacuum platen is basically how you hoop a shirt to put it into the G4 printer. So all I'm going to do is take the shirt and I'm going to lay it across the top of the printer. And if my microphone is picking it up, you can actually hear the vacuum suck the shirt into place. I'm going to give you a close up of how that works in just a second. But what it's doing right now is air is actually sucking the shirt down, keeping it in place. So when it goes into the printer, the, uh, the ink jets have the optimum chance of producing a great graphic on top. Now there are several ways to hoop shirts. You can use a tuck lock platen like we do with the M2, which I'll show you in just a second. You can also use the one that some of the other direct garment printers do on the market. That's they lay the shirt down onto a sticky mat and then there's a ring that goes over the top. Well, first I want to show you how you would adjust a shirt if you didn't quite get it straight on the, on the G4. And then we'll talk about how that differs from everything else. Okay, so you should be able to see that this shirt is not quite straight. You see the sleeve hanging over there? Well, you want to make sure that it's centered on the platen for when you put it into the printer. So all I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to tug on the outside to make sure that it's flat. Okay, now if I get a good, um, if I lay down the shirt properly, I'll never have to do that. I can simply come over here, shake it out a bit, and then bring it right along the top, and you'll pretty much get a perfect lay down every time once you've had a little practice. That just takes about five seconds, as opposed to the, some of the other methods that we're gonna talk about. The next would be to load the platen into the printer and have it print the shirt. It comes back out. Once it's printed, I'm just gonna take it off the printer the same way I put it on. So that's the idea, is that it's so simple, there's no skill involved really, is I can just lay a shirt on top of the platen, I can print it. When, when it's ready to go to the heat press, I can just pull it back off. Okay, now, the way that works is there is a sensor, there's two open uh, holes right here, and if I cover it with my hand, you can hear that the vacuum gets turned on. And what that's doing is it's not only sucking air um, down here so it holds the shirt in place, but when it goes into the printer, the fan is still going, so it actually sucks the ink down into the shirt. It's one of the reasons why we get such great images and why the maintenance is so much less on the G4. Now, if you want to, we can take this top off because there are a few different sizes and you can see how the inside works. All right, now what you'll notice here is that here are the four um, suction fans. I'm just gonna cover it so you can see them operate. That do all the work for you. And by the way, that is the uh, Belket logo if you don't recognize it. Um, last year, Sometime, Belket um, joined forces with Coldesi to do specifically advanced engineering projects like the vacuum platen. Now there's also a couple of sliders here that you can adjust the level of the vacuum, but for the most part, you're just going to put the top platen on, you're gonna lay a shirt down, and you're gonna put it in the printer and go. Here's how I would load the same shirt onto the M2 and similar printers that use a tuck lock platen. What you do is you lay the shirt on top, make sure it's centered, and then you tuck the shirt in around the sides, making sure that you're not applying too much tension in the middle because you don't want the shirt to be overstretched and then print. Um, it's not good for the finished product. Once that's all tucked in properly, then you are ready to go. Now, if I happen to do it not quite straight, if I lay it down not quite straight and I get started, in order to fix it, I've of course got to untuck it and start over. And then after the shirt is printed, you know, all of this is going to be tucked in. So what I'll need to do is make sure that I can untuck the shirt carefully so I don't bunch up the shirt while I'm doing so. So you can see just a contrast to using the vacuum platen in the G4. As you recall, I just laid the print down. I just laid the shirt down on the platen and made sure it was straight and went. Now you've seen how fast a shirt can load and unload and how the vacuum platen works here. Um, in comparison, a tuck lock platen user, uh, an experienced pro using, a, uh, using an M2 will take about 15 seconds to tuck a shirt properly. 
um, to put it into the printer and then slightly longer than that to take it out because you want to make sure that the shirt doesn't accidentally kick up and touch the um, and touch the wet ink on top of the shirt. Now this is also in contrast to the systems where they have a sticky platen. You lay the shirt on top and then you put a hoop on it to make sure it's secure because you saw how easily I adjusted the, the shirt If it's off center, I can just adjust the shirt like this. Imagine that if you have a big hoop on the top, you're going to have to lift that up um, and move the shirt and put it down every time to make sure it's secure. So very fast, very efficient. And again, that the vacuum as it goes into the printer helps suck the ink overspray out of the air, makes it uh, helps contribute to the really low, low maintenance on the G4. So that is a quick explanation of the vacuum platen. I hope I've made it sound as amazing as, as it is. If you have any questions, please just feel free to hit the button below or give us a call at Coldessi and talk about the DTG G4.